If you're like me, you were surprised when you read Harry Potter and discovered that the food did not magically appear on the tables in the Hogwarts, but rather was made by house elves in the basement. My name is Steve Baskoff, and I'm going to talk about how we create and maintain Tadwig vocabularies using spreadsheet. It doesn't happen by magic. I'm going to talk about the standards documentation specification and its scope, about the Tadwig metadata model, and about the rs.tadwig.org GitHub repository. Then I'll show you how you can create a new vocabulary using a spreadsheet and about how vocabulary maintainers can change them using spreadsheets as well. And finally, I'll delve into some of the technical details about how those spreadsheets are ingested and the derived files are generated. The Tadwig standards documentation specification is a standard which says how human readable text documents should be formatted. It also describes how text documents that describe vocabularies should be formatted and how machine readable descriptions of text documents and vocabulary metadata should be structured. It describes vocabularies at the bag of terms level, which includes labels, definitions, but does not specify more complex things like how XML schemas should be formed or about ontologies or application profiles. One of the critical features of the SDS is that every representation of the metadata should be substantively the same. In other words, if you go to a human readable document and see what the definition of a term is, you should get the same definition as you would get if you acquired the machine readable metadata. That brings one of the first important issues. How do we make sure that all representations of metadata are the same? Another feature that the specification describes is a version model where current terms move through time, but they can change. And as they change, different versions of those terms are issued. We want to be able to track all the previous versions so we can see what the state was of a particular term in the past. So how do we generate the version metadata and associate it with current term metadata? Then there is also a hierarchy model which describes the way that vocabularies are constructed in Tadwig. Vocabularies have terms which are grouped together in term lists. Those are basically terms that share a similar namespace. And then those term lists are grouped together within a vocabulary. You can have one or more vocabularies within a particular standard. If you generate a new version at some lower level in the hierarchy, that will automatically spawn new versions of the higher levels as well. So how do we proliferate the new versions at the higher levels in the hierarchy automatically? Well, the place where the magic lives is the rs.tadwig.org GitHub repository. Each directory in the repository has a Darwin core archive-like structure of CSV files. This is a sort of apocalypse proof format for storing data. We have actually had cases in the past where Tadric standards have been lost. And the idea here is that we have very simple and easily understandable forms of the data in a very secure place, GitHub. One of the things that you may be getting from this description of these issues is that it's way too complicated to think about doing these sorts of changes by hand. Let's take a look at how you can create a vocabulary using a spreadsheet. This method is predicated on the idea that vocabulary developers should not have to understand all the gory technical details about how the creation of terms is processed. They should simply be able to fill out a spreadsheet that has easily understandable headers. There is a set of directions for how to do this at this URL. And there are also examples of three types of vocabularies that can be developed with the spreadsheets. The establishment means vocabulary, which was a recently adopted addition to Darwin Core, was developed using this system. It used a simple controlled vocabulary type of spreadsheet. So it has a column for the controlled value string. Once the spreadsheet is created and run through the script, the information that's in the spreadsheet gets transformed into human readable documents and machine readable metadata, both following the form of the standards documentation specification. 
The process of maintaining a vocabulary is similar. It is also spreadsheet based. However, it uses one of the existing course spreadsheets in the rs.tadwig.org repository as a starting point. You simply take the table, delete any of the machine generated metadata columns, and also any rows that you don't want to change. Then all you do is edit the rows for terms that need to be changed and add rows for any new terms. So it's actually quite a bit less complicated than creating a new vocabulary. This process was used for the recent term addition of the Darwin Core Pathway term and also degree of establishment term and the revision of the establishment mean terms. So this is an example of a simple vocabulary type spreadsheet does not have controlled values or anything like that. The result again is the new term showing up in the list of terms document and also now deliverable as machine readable metadata. It's now time to visit the Hogwarts kitchen and see where all the gory details are of how this actually works. If you're a non-technical person, you can just skip this because you don't really need to know. You can go get a coffee. But if you're interested in knowing how it works or if you'd like to be able to generate your own list of terms documents from a spreadsheet, then you should stay. What I'm going to talk about here is summarized in these instructions that are in the repository. The sheet that you filled out and hand edited gets processed by a Python script in a Jupyter notebook. That hand edited CSV gets turned into the Darwin Core archive-like CSV files that are in the rs.tadwig.org repository. The links between these different spreadsheets, time stamps, version IRIs are all generated by the script. Then there's a mechanism by which commits to the repository cause it to be pushed out to a test server and releases from the repository cause the data to be pushed into a production service. Thanks to Matt Blissett of GBIV who worked out these details. What happens in this case is there are mapping tables that explain how the column headers in the tables in the repository get mapped to properties. And this allows the server to then generate the machine readable representations in Turtle, XML, and also some of the HTML representations are generated automatically. The third step is to generate the human readable documents. There is a Python script, again, in the form of a Jupyter notebook. This is kind of a template script that's hackable. It generates a list of terms document. There's also a script that is used by Darwin Core to generate the quick reference guide. This ensures that whatever is in the original table is reproduced in every different form. The markdown template for the human readable documents follows the SDS guidelines, so it automatically turns it into the form that the SDS requires. There's one additional step that we can take, and that is to run a script that will combine the normative definition from the one CSV file with non-normative translations that are found in another CSV file. And these can be used to generate JSON-LD that is a SCOS representation of the data. The reason for separating the translations from the basic metadata is that since the translations are not controlled by the standards process, they can be developed rapidly. So for the new controlled vocabularies that were recently adopted, we are looking for translators so that we can get them translated into as many languages as possible. As soon as we have a translation, we can run it through the script and that immediately becomes available in the JSON-LD. Because the JSON-LD is machine readable, developers can have their applications easily ingested through the internet. Here's an example of a web page that displays the labels and definitions of the controlled vocabulary terms in English. However, I can also display them in Dutch or in Spanish. As soon as a new version of the JSON-LD is pushed to GitHub with any additional translations, they will immediately become available in this web page. We're really excited to have this simple spreadsheet-based approach as a way to make Tadwig standards metadata 
more widely available to the international community in their own language.